Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back, not welcome back, but welcome to a new series of, I don't really want to call this like, you know, Flans Tech and More Bounce Pad Cannons, whatever the heck, but like, I've done some research on the internet and over YouTube and I've tried searching up, you know, how to make cannons that include Tinker's Construct Bounce Pads and literally no results come up. So I've seen people make videos on like, you know, how they're used and whatnot, but I've never actually seen any video that describes the use of them to be maybe toward a faction cannon or you know just a cannon in general because bounce pads use a lot of aerodynamics now, what we're going to be going over today for the basics is bounce pad mechanics um as you can see diagrammed here when you use a bounce pad for cannoning there's some different things that you can do you can start off with the basic bounce pad like this is you know how people you know got the invention of the wheel like oh my gosh what is this um, I just lit TNT on a stinking bounce pad and now it goes flying, so like, they're just sitting here playing around and then all of a sudden, ba -doop. What you're then gonna do is notice that if you place it at different levels, what's gonna happen? So I've made this little diagram here where I'm gonna place the sand a certain distance above and it's going to make this arc over here and you'll notice how bounce pads work are not always act. For example, if I put this guy right here, you'll notice it kind of flings, right? Yet if I place it a bit higher, you'll notice that it actually goes short. Yet, all of a sudden, if I go over to the next level, on three, it suddenly decides to make a, you know, a minor arc. Yet, if I do go to four, you can notice it goes even farther. Yet, if I go higher, now it's starting to go a bit slower. And I don't want to make myself too inaccurate here, so let me just, you know, prove this to you guys again real quick. So you can see that doing this makes it do that. And now all of a sudden, I'm gonna, you think it would go a bit farther, but then it just decides to kind of do that. But then, you know, when you put it back up here, then of course it's gonna start to go back there. There's a sweet spot in cannons with bounce pads. And for this one, the sweet spot was um, five blocks above the original bounce pad. Now, as you can tell, if I put one right here, you see it only goes over here. However, if you simply compile and compress your bounce pads like we did over there with the side ones. Then if we put it right here, you'll notice it's now going to basically fly all the way over there, which is already past where we had this thing. So just like try to think about it. Now, there is a thing that you can do even as a player and it's quite fun. But basically if you stack up your bounce pads where you make it go forward, then back, then forward, it's like, you know, constantly confused. It's gonna just launch you like straight up. Like you just have to simply walk into this and boom. So, so by placing sand right here, this is going to then fling up into here, bounce back, bounce up, and then out. So you'll see it will go like this. It'll bounce straight up, and it goes all the way up there where that arc is. Now, and it and it'll even almost went just as far. So, you know, just kind of see stuff like that. Just keep in mind that, like, you know, the way you place your bounce pads makes it do different things. Placing it like this can make it go straight up by an insane amount. And you always want to try and find the sweet spot of your cannon before you just place one out and just perfect it because let's say that you made a cannon that was three double boosters long instead of five i mean instead of four you could literally sacrifice three four chunks and you want the maximum distance so you better make sure that when you actually make your cannon that you got a sweet spot to do it in now if we come over here to this next one this is where we get into our basic cannons now i've kind of gotten the glass around here so that you guys can easily see what's going on here now it's not advised that you do this, um, that you place dispensers and sand right here. This will only work with sand and single player, but if you try to dispense TNT in single player right here, it'll just constantly bounce up and down and it won't fit in here. On the server, it will, but it's a bit glitchy and your cannon might blow up. So what we're gonna do right here is you'll notice that basically it will fall into this and then it will build up its kinetic energy. Brrr, and then, yeah, I know sound effects, whatever. And then when it hits the end, it's gonna go fling and it's gonna fling far. And it's not gonna fling like this arc type, no, because when we compress it, it's going to fling and the way this thing works is you'll see it just but you'll notice that when it goes in here if we kind of replay that it does is it bounces up and then it kind of angles back down so what it's doing is it's technically rebounding off of the bounce pads rapidly accelerating its rate and if you ever wanted to make it go an extra bit distance far you could always remove that final block and it will then fling it all the way out there um because whenever you remove the top block you can tend to do that with items like you know you could set stuff up like this and it's going to technically just do the same thing in comparison to whenever you do this and it's just going to go way more shorter 
it, it's really up to you what you want to do. Now, if you wanted to make it so that you can place TNT in here because you know that's kind of a nice choice, what you can always do instead of doing this is you can technically take what you have right here, this little design method that we all have and know, which is this, and then you can basically add another layer beneath it and then remove this here. Now what this will do is it'll actually allow anything to go down here, so called uh, sand, TNT, whatever. So if I place this here, you'll notice it instantly goes up and out like so. Let me see it again, flies out. It's really hard to like tell what's happening exactly because you know, it kind of glitched through the top. But now if we cap off this one, you should be able to see that it does the same general thing. Okay. I think we don't, this one doesn't have a sweet spot. There's that one sweet spot. So you'll see that one guy is going to fly all the way over there, all the way past our border. And yeah, so you can light TNT, it'll go through, it'll shoot, and then it will blow up. Now you'll notice that that TNT did not go the same distance as the sand. And we're going to get into that in a second, but things can get pretty inaccurate if you are not accurate. For example, if you wanted to do this and then place sand, you're going to want to make sure that your sand and your TNT are landing on the same block, right? And that's another key critical feature when you're working on cannons like these, is that you really want that sweet spot. But how are you going to get it, you might ask? Hmm. Well, we're going to figure that out soon enough. But now... We just want to talk about sand comp. How the heck are you going to get sand comp in your machine? Because you got your little dispensers right here. They're going to you know dispense TNT through this. It's going to run through the barrel and then it's going to you know shoot out. Because you know you got this already where it's going to shoot out over there. But what do you want to do if you want sand comp? Because maybe you might get too tired of just doing that and always having to rely on it. You know back stacking up like that. What you can always do is you can grab a builder's wand right here. And you can just simply right click. And what's going to happen is those will all go through like that in a pattern of three. And then you can just kind of cycle back through this. Now you're going to have to make sure that these are on separate layers because otherwise what's going to happen is they're just going to start bouncing into each other's layers. And then it's not going to, you know, it's not going to work, look nice at all. So, you know, you can do this. And then you can see that within moments, you can see that within moments, we've already sand stacked all the way through there. Now, of course, you know, being different sand distance, I mean, di being different bounce pad distance away, you're going to have a different effect. So you might want to add multiple accelerations or just use one side because using one side is probably the best case scenario in this point. Because, you know, you can, you can just do this, which then, you know, evolves in whatever the heck this thing is trying to do. <laughs> But you get the point. Sand comp is aligning like a sign barrel with, you can use a builder's wand or whatnot. So then we're going to get over to this. Now this is a pretty cool thing because essentially what it's doing is it's constantly keeping the sand in the middle while applying twice the bounce pressure. So if you'll see right here, if I were to, if this bounce pad right here were to drop in and bounce in, what's going to happen is it's going to constantly conflict up here. And I had to add this many bounce pads just to prevent it from actually flying backwards. Because this speed is insane. Watch this. Okay, we're going to do that again. Now, let's put this thing on slow-mo from the bottom. You'll see it is constantly trying to fight. And then finally, it flies. And this thing absolutely flies. If you could get this to work with any model that you're doing horizontally, you're golden. Now, one way you can do this is by making it force itself back and then flinging it out the second that you get it up there. Now the way that you're going to do this is simply by putting it in and you'll notice what happens if you actually look in slow-mo is it bounces up into this corner and it bounces up into the upper left hand corner. And now we're going to go over to the logistical side of how are you going to fling things distance and TNT wise. Now, the thing with bounce pads is that the more items you have running through the cannon at once, the slower it goes. And the reason I'm saying that is because if you put multiple items through the bounce pad, it is going to make it go a shorter distance. Now I have some proof in here. This right here is a obby one shot cannon, one of the most original ones that I made in my videos where it is going to then launch 5 TNT into this. It's then going to fling up into here. And if you actually, and you know, we still have this window gap here. You still see that not hidden at all. Um, you know, no secrets, no anything. But when we launch this, what you're going to see here is I'm going to take up the same cannon. You can see the cannon is the same body as a four long body, just like this one does one, two, three, four. And I'm going to launch this single one. And here's what's going to happen. You'll see this TNT will fire and it will fling all the way over here. 
Okay, this TNT will then fire right around here. And, you know, you can pretty much see the logistics of what the heck is going on here. It's going to then do that, basically. I mean, there's really not much more that you can even see. Now, we're going to see what happens when you launch this one. You'll notice that this one, A, it's going a shorter distance, okay? And B, if we actually take this guy off right here, I'm pretty sure it's if we actually double up on this, but if not, I'm going to take it off. But yeah, okay. So if we actually do this, you can see that this cannon is going to then fling itself all the way over there, and that's pretty dang cool. But, you know, the point... Oh, this has glitched. Okay, GG. Yeah. Anyways, you'll notice that when I fire this... I better not have just, like, actually glitched up everything. Okay, good, I didn't. It's just in this chunk. Okay, so when I fire this, you'll notice that you'll be hearing that... You'll be hearing that sound of, like, struggling. Of um, them trying to get out. Now, listen to this. Now, what that is in the time that it's happening is it's basically they're 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 all launching at the same time but you'll see they're at different heights so they're actually going to all come out at different times that's why you see the first batch come out and then the second one after it while it goes to the same point if you need to get someone right as it blows up this is this design is not going to work for you we're going to need is you know multiple ones of these guys from different angles all coming into the cannon at once and you know it's it's a, it's pretty cool anyways if we launch something like this which is nine you're going to see it launches out like five different versions and they go at different distances, which is terrible. So height on bounce by cannons, not the best idea. This generally all the way around is probably one of the best ideas that you can actually do for the most efficient manner for getting your precise accuracy. See, it's like what's happening here as well is that the TNT when it fires, you'll see when I hit the dispense button that it, it flings it up, right? As it, as it goes. So what I'm saying here is that if you get it to kind of sit there, and then you break that, it's going to be at the same height. And then, you know, you can start, you know, barreling down. So that's also a good factor, is having the pistons that, you know, kind of force into the boundaries to make things work. But that's all I've got time for this part one of the basic dynamics and workings of bounce pad cannons. They are pretty dang effective, and you'll see that in the next episode, when we focus on logistics, distances, and efficiency. I'll see you guys all in the next episode. Goodbye!